Before we start solving some of the problems related to divide and conquer, let's discuss some tricks to identify if the problem can be solved using divide and conquer. So for identification, we have these points. Divide and conquer can be applied only when each problem may generate two or more subproblems of same kind. And that can be solved recursively and can be combined back for a global result. Some of the examples are merge sort, where subproblems result can be combined back for the global result, quick sort that gets solved by dividing and conquering the subproblems, binary search, however, this more specifically comes under decrease and conquer because there is only one subproblem. We will implement merge sort and quick sort in upcoming lectures. Now coming to how to approach if you identify that you should apply DC, that is divide and conquer. So how are you going to approach the problem? Approaching divide and conquer can look a little tricky in first shot, but below steps can help. So divide and conquer. Given a problem of size n, divide it into a subproblems of size n divided by b where a must be greater than 1 and b a must be greater than or equal to 1 and b must be greater than 1 and then solve each problem recursively which we call the conquer step we are going to do it recursively until it becomes really small or almost constant this is called multi-branch recursion now the third and the last step is combine the solution of subproblems into an overall solution so these are the three steps and there is a relation called recurrence associated with divide and conquer that will help us to calculate the complexity for our algorithm so it is tn equals to a t n divided by b plus work done to combine and merge all the subproblems back so you are dividing a problem having size n into small problems having size n divided by b each and the number of subproblems are a so the complexity of the complete solution or the complete algorithm is equal to the addition of complexity of all the subproblems and the work done to combine and merge all the subproblems back so we will discuss more about recurrence when we will discuss the time complexity in divide and conquer because defining the time complexity of divide and conquer can be a little tricky. So I think by now you are ready to solve some of the problems related to divide and conquer. So let's move on from the theory and start doing some code from next lecture for some interesting related problems that will actually make you confident about this approach.